Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we have a 2011 BMW 128i, I believe it is. And it's got the customer concern of uh, no crank and came from another shop. And they suspect that there is no communication with the DME. I already did a pre-scan as I usually do. That's usually how I start my videos is with a pre-scan. And it does in fact skip over the DME in the process of the auto scan and to confirm the client's request we can see here actually before it's really weird because it cranks sometimes and sometimes it doesn't but key on there's no check engine light oh there it popped on seems like it pops on whenever it wants now sometimes it won't even allow me to crank it but <clears throat> point is we have no DME communication. Right there, I'm hitting the brake and holding the start button, and it doesn't crank. So that's kind of funny. <laughs> Let's see if I can catch it again. Gonna hit the brake. Nothing. I guess when it turns on that check engine light, it does crank. Now, that, this is, I pretty much picked up the camera as soon as this came around. So, I might have done the auto scan before doing that check engine light. So, um, <clears throat> I will show the pre-scan. This is it right here. This is before anything, before letting the, uh, that light come on and it cranking. And, we have a bunch of present codes. Uh, no messages from the engine control module, a lot of apps and codes uh, that we don't know under what conditions the other shop has been uh, putting this car in but we do have oh, we have a low battery voltage code so that could be what's responsible for those other codes but we do have some present codes, we have no uh, message between from the DSC I'm sorry, from the DME to the DSC. And from the cash module as well. Basically, confirming what we're seeing. I'm glad they didn't uh, clear the codes. We do have some apps and codes, immobilizer faults. Who knows what's been going on with this vehicle? But, or you know what they've done with it but point is we have incorrect signal from engine management a bunch of stuff going on with the, the DME for some reason um, we're gonna do another scan now that the check engine light is on real quick just to make sure um, there truly is no communication with the DME it does try the diesel first that might take a while I'll skip over that real quick um, I'll fast forward through that <coughs> okay it skipped it all over again uh, nothing different it has seven codes this time now for the transmission but still only one present first things first um, Usually with these, a lot of cars, the fan will turn on 100% full blast when there's no DME communication. I'm not saying that there is, but that's the usual case. If I was to disconnect the DME completely, more than likely it'll, the, most cars, the strategy is to turn on the fan 100%. Not sure about these. Mercedes for sure, yes. And many other cars. Another thing that's going on is <clears throat> there's this weird noise coming from behind this glove box area. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Could be the electronics box fan. I don't know. It sounds weird. Uh, could be related. Could be, you know, totally unrelated. We don't know. But usually the first thing I like to do when I have a DME concern or a PCM lack of communication concern um, is check my 5 volt reference. Um, if the DME is truly dead, we'll have zero volts. There'll be nothing there. And we can move on with powers and grounds and communication checks. 
to the DME. But if there's something there, um, could be anything, and it could be four volts, it could be three volts, it could be two. There could there's a possibility that a sensor is shorting out the five volt reference, and that in turn will cause the DME or PCM or ECU, whatever you want to call it, it will cause it to go a wall. So want to make sure we rule that out before anything this these cars are loaded with sensors even just the dme is loaded with sensors um i may have to resort to just disconnecting the dme completely and only giving it power ground and communication to it just to rule out any kind of other input issue but that's worst case scenario uh, we'll do what's we'll err to the side of convenience and take it from there all right, so we got our meter out and I'm gonna ground it and we have a couple of sensors here. I'm just gonna disconnect a random sensor. It's a two wire sensor here. I couldn't even tell you exactly what it is. Uh, it's probably either uh, coolant temp or oil pressure. I doubt it's oil pressure though. I believe the oil pressure is up here. Anywho, point is, we're just looking for any kind of sensor that'll give us um, a 5 volt reference. So I'm not going to dig into this pin, don't do that. I'm simply going to touch it, I'm laying it on the pin. And as you guys can see, hold on carefully gonna lay my pin there we've got a good ground there and then on the other pin we have <clears throat> you guys can see that it is 3.83 volts do apologize for the glare 3.83 volts I'm gonna look for a proper terminal we're gonna keep this here and start disconnecting sensors we may be limited as to access um, like I said we may resort to simply going straight to the DME I actually think looking at this uh, we may have no other choice already uh, everything is buried in this vehicle even the disconnecting the throttle body the mass airflow is easy to do I'm just gonna grab a pin real quick and we'll go ahead and stay on there but <clears throat> not exactly hopeful as to how much we can access so here's the proper terminal that we're going to fit here and we have a solid 3.7 for those of you who can't see 3.6 3.7 I do have a maintainer on this vehicle uh, at all times the headlights don't turn off probably if I hit the parking light I mean the parking brake it'll turn off but for now I'm just going to disconnect the mass airflow and see and we still have a solid 3.8 I'm going to leave that right there hopefully there's no glare ah well that sucks there's gonna be glare but we have 3.8 right there you guys will probably want to see it that's the mass that's the voltage now with the mass airflow disconnected here's my wire ah you probably can't even see it but mass airflow is disconnected i'm looking for anything else i can access but <laughs> It is pretty bad. <clears throat> I've got my VBT sol solenoids up here. Those aren't sensors, so that's not going to do me any good. Um, I really think I'm going to have to go straight to the DME at this point, really, to be honest with you. Just for the heck of it. Disconnecting this. Nothing. Just for the hell of it. I didn't think it would do anything, but... What the heck? Nothing's lost there. Uh, 
we're gonna go and uncover this cover over here and check out that DME <coughs> so removing this cover didn't do much for me I'm going to take this whole cover off and um, you know just just make some clearance so let's go ahead and do that real quick it actually takes very little time it's not too bad Gonna need some eight millimeters. And most of the time you don't have to remove the cabin filter cover. You could just do it like this. And there is a sensor here you will have to disconnect. And done. Now we can actually access the DME no problem. Let me go ahead and change the camera view and we'll get going on this. All right, so here we have a clear view of our DME, but I'm still not comfortable with this, so I'm gonna with the key off, disconnect it and remove it from this this cover, this housing here. There are two little detents you have to pull back in order to get it out. And it is on there good. Hold on. Goodness. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. I did not, I was not expecting for it to be this quick. Hold on. What do we see here, fellas? We got the mighty green crusties. You know what, let me get a better shot. Check that out. My goodness, can, can it get any worse than this? This is ridiculous. I don't think I have to do much more digging than this. I said it at all. When they say find the water, they are not lying, fellas. Look, it's still wet. <laughs> oh, that is classic. Well, I wasn't, I really didn't know it would be this quick. So I do apologize for those of you who are, you know, itching for a little more. But we'll see where this takes us. Maybe we can. Um, we're going to see what the customer wants to do. They're probably going to go brand new. If they do, great. Uh, there are other options, but it's if it comes down to those other options, I probably won't be filming them because it takes EEPROM work and it's, it's just, that's not what the channel is about. It's going to be more about diagnostics and fixing it. But this goes to show. On one hand, you know, somebody might have gotten lucky, looked at the PCM or the DME and, and you know, swapped it on and, and done. But on the other hand, we let evidence guide us. You know, those of you who know Scanner Danner, you know that you check five volts reference first, always. It doesn't matter what vehicle it is. Um, some of them have a strategy to continue talking, but there's no strategy that will save this. Um, but the point, point of the video is, you know, have a diagnostic process. For me, it was check 5-volt reference first. If that would have been fine, that doesn't mean that the DME is good. But still, um, 
the next part of the process would have been, you know, powers, grounds, communication, uh, and all that good stuff. We're going to take a look at this con these connectors as well because they, can, they couldn't possibly be in good shape. So let's see if I can zoom you guys in. And bring that up a bit. Bring up my exposure. Oh my goodness. Um, might be too much for the camera. I'll lay these out over here so you guys can see it. But I'm not sure where we're going to go with these, connecting, these connections. I don't think that's something that they'll just sell you by itself we could attempt a cleaning but that's that's a that is a tedious job you know what let me grab the camera bring you guys over take it off of this tripod whoa <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> oh man and i get complaints that i zoom into my face too much so go figure let me bring this down a bit all right it's not like I do it on purpose. Check that out. My goodness. That is pretty bad, man. I'm, I've not seen one this bad. Seen pretty bad ones. But not like this. I don't know that they'll sell us a whole new kit. A whole new connector. I mean, that they'll probably sell us the whole harness. We're going to let the customer decide. Now, before I continue, this is just a quick note. If you guys have... If you guys observed, this electronics box was totally missing its cover. There's no cover on this. So this is really a result of neglect. Somebody did some kind of job here. This is loose. There's bolts missing on this. Maybe somebody did a valve cover gasket on this thing or something, something underneath here. Took off this cowl. Usually when you have to do valve cover gaskets on this vehicle, you have to remove this and get these wires out of the way. At least I do. As a result of that, no cowl, no uh, cover. I mean, this is what you get. So it's unfortunate. I don't believe that the shop that handed this job over to us did it. I think this is a this is something that happened a long time ago. And uh, the final note: we jump inside. DME is not connected key is on though we no longer have any noise no more noise so that's gone which is nice but it's unfortunate uh, one simple mistake one simple uh, oversight can cause such an expensive repair but <clears throat> that's just that's just the world <laughs> that's the world we live in I mean uh, you have to take it to people who I'm sorry you just have to take your car to people who know what they're doing uh, Sometimes it, it could have been actually uh, someone who, who knows what they're doing, but maybe they were distracted. Maybe they were called to do something else. Maybe they were, you know, the customer was asking them questions. Who knows? We couldn't, we couldn't say. All we know is that for sure there's no cover there. I've searched around the vehicle, not too much. I haven't gone in the trunk or anything, even though the trunk is open, actually. And I see no white cover, no black cover, no nothing. So... Uh, regardless of how it happened, uh, how the, the technician or whoever worked on this before uh, screwed it up, we know that it happened because of somebody who was in there, digging in there, maybe doing another job. And uh, it sucks, but it's just the, re the reality of the situation. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of why I make these videos is so that people can avoid doing these things, you know. But <clears throat> I digress, and uh, we'll see if we get an approval. If not, I think this video still counts as a good diagnosis video, simply because you're supposed to s rule out a 5-volt reference issue before ever condemning a computer or DME or even a TCM at times. So uh, an input issue, that's what I'm trying to say. It's rule out an input issue, a shorted input issue. Those of you who have seen any scanner Danner video, uh, regarding a uh, 5 volt reference, you'll, you'll know that that's his, one of his first steps. And even Diagnose Dan, and those of you who have seen Diagnose Dan's video on a door handle causing, on a BMW I believe it was, a door handle causing an issue on a different module. Um, 
you know it could save you costly repairs but at the same time it could lead you to the problem so it's it's a great step you should never forget it uh, always check your uh, for shorted input or shorted reference circuits so uh, we'll take it from here <laughs> all right so the customer only approved uh, not the replacement of the harness it's we went ahead and cleaned it up to the best of our abilities uh, there's obviously no guarantees there it's you know we're limited to the approvals of the customer we use this here it's I believe it's called Windsor pretty good stuff to clean it and um, here it is after the cleaning and I also use some stable in 22 afterwards in order to promote uh, conductivity um, other things I could tell you about this job is that the uh, first uh, module that we got was brain dead couldn't do anything with it second one was working and um, tried with the Altel IM608 to uh, write ISN to make it compatible with this cast module and it, it was just wasn't going um, so we have to use VVDI and VVDI2 in order to get it done. Um, like I said, I'm not filming that part of the, the whole equation, but we're going to go ahead and reinstall these modules and uh, confirm the fix um, for this crank no start. All right, so we got the computer mocked up, connected, and the cast module fully connected and installed. And the final piece of the puzzle would be that cap I'm sorry that lid for the electronics box but we're still waiting on the new one and uh, let's go ahead and confirm the repair and as I said before we don't know how it's gonna run or how I usually say at least we don't know how it's gonna run what's gonna happen after but the approval the job at the moment is the crank no start so let's go ahead and uh, turn on terminal 15 Nice. It's got some misfires. We got a crank no start and a check engine light on. Probably going to have to do some relearns, but at the moment, that's where we are. Um, <laughs> that's a fix. So I appreciate you all taking the time uh, to join me on this one. I didn't realize it would be so, you know, straight to the point. But, you know, it's nice to see uh, that uh, I, it's, it is kind of stereotypical. They say that European cars, you know, just look for the water. In this case, it couldn't be any more true. Um, I guess we got lucky on this one because, you know, it just, it was straight to the point almost. But point, I guess, the main takeaway of the video is follow that diagnostic process and it should lead you to the same place. <laughs> Sometimes people don't want to disconnect the PCM immediately, but, you know, that's, that's, I, I really didn't have a choice at that point, um, especially with the whole, like all of the inputs that could have possibly have been could have been a possible short you know imagine trying to disconnect each and every single sensor I, I wanted to give it power grounds and comms and see if the short will go away but that you know um, that ended up you know just being water intrusion what can I say so I did open up the old module and it, it, it did have water it didn't have rust but it did have water bubbles shorting out separate circuits uh, it doesn't have a conformal coating on it to protect the circuit board itself and uh, there's no adhesive also to keep the PC, the DME uh, sealed completely like uh, like um, certain CMNs, PCMs would, or DMEs I guess you could call it. I think I'll leave it at that. I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, hit like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you all next time.